Ebenezer, father must not see us speaking to one another, or he will take the entire family away immediately. I've been watching him all night. He went down for branding and cigars moments ago, so we are free to talk. When he saw us talking at the regatta last summer, he became so cross. <laughs> cross? I thought it was apoplexy. Why does he hate me so? It's not you. It's just everything about you. An apprentice, middling family connections, no prospects whatsoever. It's everything he fears I'll fall in love with. And have you? Have I what? Fallen in love. Because I have. We have managed to spend only minutes together several times a year because my father and Mr. Fezziwick cannot business together. That's it. Hardly the ingredients for romance. Is there something else then? Of course not, Ebenezer. I've known you all my life. and I've never met a finer man. But my father has plans for me. That has nothing to do with my own desires. So you might love me one day. I might love you now. But to think on that is folly. My father would never... Marry me. What? Run away and marry me. We will manage somehow, without your father's consent. No, we will not. That is not the way of the world. I must marry a gentleman with property, and you must find a sweet shop girl to settle your affections upon, no matter what we might prefer. So I can do nothing to change your opinion of me. My opinion could not be higher, but my father... I'll tell you what. I think I can delay any talks of marriage for at least a year if you can advance in position during that year. It will ease my father's objections. Because, truthfully, Ebenezer, I have no objection at all. A year, then? Whatever happens, I want you to take this token of my affection. In a different world, I would not even hesitate. Merry Christmas, Ebenezer. It feels very different now that it's empty. All the life has gone out of this place. My father too was brought down by the crash. We're moving to Australia to start over again. But we're engaged. I told you that. Your reduced circumstances would matter little to me. That you are still good enough in spite of your father's circumstances. I have only come to say a few words. Did you know that betrothal rings were created to signify belonging with someone? When I received it, I was overjoyed at the thought of a future belonging with you. And now? This ring was not a promise of wealth, position, or even happiness. It was only a promise of love. And love was more than enough. But for you, it was just a small piece of gold. I'm not sure if it was ever worth more than it costs. You traded love, family, and future for a piece of gold, Ebenezer. So now I must return it. You are free, Ebenezer. You belong to no one. <laughs>